a piece of stage hardware and the white model are due on Monday. What is the white model of? Either your room, similar to the design, intro to design, or whatever design course that was that everybody had to take. Fundamental, what was it? Uh, uh, basic design. Basic design, where you built a white model for, I believe, Steve. Somewhere, right? um, or you can do it off streetcar. Okay. Can I do that email to you? As soon as I have it formatted, yes. So here, let's take a look up here for a second. Um, and this is actually something, this file has a bug in it that I've reported. And uh, it's a known bug that they've fixed, but it's an older file, so it still has it in there. Uh, but we're going to take a look here at some hanging hardware that's sitting on the back of a set. It's uh, rendering at the moment. But you'll see here that we have a bottom hanging iron sitting in the bottom of this flat and it's slowly rendering. There we go. So there's a bottom hanging iron and over here we have the makings of a turnbuckle. Right? And this is where the bug came in is that for some reason when you did certain things it rotated some of your parts. That was, a, that was an adventure. Because every time I'd open the file these parts would be rotated again. So this is the turnbuckle it just the problem with it is it has a, a, t a twisted piece here. And there's the turnbuckle by itself. So let's take a look at it from a few different angles. Oops. No. No, it's, it's, uh, it's all of them. So what would happen is that I would have to regroup them. I would have to fix it by grabbing this thing and rotating it and then putting it back where it needed to be. Yeah, each time it broke, I'd have to do this, and that was kind of fun. Um, and then, of course, they wouldn't turn in the same direction, so I'd have to look at them from different points of view, and then rotate them again. And there's that one. And it goes back into the turnbuckle here. And then this is from a different turnbuckle there. But this is basically, not that one, that one. Um, that's basically the turnbuckle. This one's moved a little bit too. That's the turnbuckle piece. Now, the program itself, so we can look up quickly at hardware. Open up a new file, blank document. The program itself has an awful lot of tools that'll help you. And there's some other menu items here. It's something called detailing, fasteners, and machine components. So if I click on fasteners, I've got here a whole slew of different kind of fasteners here, and it gives me a choice of 2D and 3D. So here's an eye bolt, and I can drag the eye bolt in here and click it, and then it asks me some questions. 3 8 16 is the size of the threads. It's a 3 8 inch bolt with 16 uh, teeth per inch. It's a plain one. The inside diameter is 3 quarters of an inch. The length is 2 inches long, and the thread length is an inch and a half. I'd like it to show the threads, um, and I'm going to place it at the, at the center of my drawing. Click OK, and there's my eye bolt. So, uh, to be perfectly honest, I don't remember whether I found that turnbuckle somewhere or whether I made it out of different parts. Um, but this is certainly the turnbuckle, the 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 eye bolt part of the turnbuckle can be this. Um, there are other tools that you can use to draw the rest of it. For example, we can take this uh, rectangle with the soft corners, and there is something that could look like a turnbuckle, and if I extrude it to um, 0.5 of an inch, now we're talking about an object that looks like this now. Okay. And now I'm going to go back to the front 
And if I use the offset tool, and I tell it to offset by uh, 0.2, and I click on the inside of the box, oops, oh, because I extruded already. Hang on, let me unextrude it. Actually, I'm going to double click on it, enter the extrude. Now I'm inside the extrude. Now I'll try and offset it. So I'm going to exit the extrude, and now I have an open object. So now I've created that turn part, this part here that turns, using that. And then I can take my eye bolt and I press duplicate, and then I'm going to uh, rotate it twice, and then hopefully move the right one down here, straight down. Nope. Well, yeah, that's what I'm doing. I'm on the same page. So I rotate both of them. Move this one down because they should be relatively even. Now I'm going to look at them all from the side. And I need to bring this one down a little ways. So now I've got those three. Now for a little bit of added uh, nicety is I'm going to choose both eye bolts. I'm going to duplicate them, duplicate them, and then I'm going to choose this thing that I made for the middle, and I'm going to choose subtract solids. And I'm going to subtract from the middle thing the threads, and that may or may not have worked. Yeah, it lost the middle part. But I'm going to take this bolt and move it out of here, and look what I did to the middle part. I actually cut the threads into that middle section from the bolt. Now what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to move it back, down view, move it over, and I'm going to draw simply another oval rectangle, um, slightly inside. Oops. Move it over slightly. Extrude it. I'm going to extrude it to one inch so it's a little bigger. Look at this from the side. Scoot it down so it's splitting both of them. Now I'm going to select both, both items. Come on, there we go. Model, subtract solids. I'm going to subtract it from the outside one. You see the one that's lit up in red? That's the one that gets subtracted from. Now these tools, this window in this select object, this window down here is a help window, but it's blank. If you hover over different parts of the buttons that you press, it lights up and tells you what each one does. So if you go over the OK button, it tells you what it's going, what's going to happen. And in this case, it says highlight the object to be subtracted from and hit OK. So the highlighted one is the uh, darker reddish one. Click OK. And now let's take a look at it. OK, it does look like a turnbuckle. And I can hit it with OpenGL. And that looks pretty much like a turnbuckle. Okay, so there's the turnbuckle. Just did it, took about five minutes. And granted, I know where to look. Okay. But that's, that's what the way you piece it all together. So I just took um, the hardest item that I have here in the pile of stuff and did it in about five minutes. And I'll post this online so you can see it again. But um, it's just a combination of subtracting stuff and so on. Well, the only hardware that I got was from this thing down here called fasteners. See, and I picked the uh, the eye bolt. Okay, and so there's different tool sets, but fasteners is where I found the eye bolt. So you're not really doing it from scratch; you're just subtracting things and rendering them. Well, I built the middle part from scratch. Yeah, that middle part. And then I used an existing eye bolt, and I can change the length of the eye bolts. 
if I want. That's from your resource no, that's from the tool set. That's instead of Spotlight and instead of Dimension 1, there's a tool set for fasteners. Because we have the copy of Vectorworks we have, we have all the tool sets. If you only had Spotlight, it might be miss it would be missing some of them. If you only had Fundamentals, you wouldn't have the Spotlight tools. But because we have the you know grandest copy here, um, yeah, you get to do what you want. And we can change the size. If I change the length of the, um, the barrel bolt, the eye bolt, it just changes like that. And the thread of the length of the, the length of the threads, when you look at these things, these eye bolts are threaded all the way. So you'd have to change the thread length to much longer so that the threads go all the way. And it should render. There it is. It is cool. Um, so that's how that works. And this is how I used it in this other drawing, which was for Cloud9 a couple of years ago. Um, if I turn this stuff back on again, uh, it's here somewhere. Let's see. My ground plan view, and then we'll look. And there, uh, here, with the rigging hardware turned on, and we'll turn off whatever this is. Oh, that's not what I want. Turn on the platforms. Okay. We can see that the rigging hardware is on the back of the flats as needed, along with bottom hanging irons and turnbuckles. The only thing I didn't draw here was the chain and the cable, which we can do. I just didn't do it for this. I don't think I did it for this. Um, so that's that. Something more complicated, which is kind of fun to look at, is um, I tried to build this whole thing with uh, with a lift that would come out of the floor to lift a, a door up, and we ran out of time. But this is the winch for it, and as you can see, it's all rendered hardware, including the pulley, which. Um, I believe I drew from scratch to make this pulley so that we could really see how this metal thing was going to be put together. So it all comes together with different pieces. All these are circles and, and different things that are cut into and, and subtracted and added and that sort of thing. Okay, questions? I'm done showing, so. Hardware's? At least. Okay. And and I'd advise everybody to do hinges because there's a project that's coming up that you're gonna need hinges. So you do it the same way. What? You do it the same way. The hinges? The hinges, yeah. the hinges were, were um I can do a quick hinge for you. I have like it'll take me a minute and a half. Watch what I do for a hinge. Um I may only do one half of the hinge, but here is and I'm not gonna measure it uh, just because I need to do it quickly. So I do a straight line. And then I go into a curved line by changing my choices up here. There's a poly line, and I want to get to a curved line. And I'm going to use this line to give myself this round part right there. Zoom in on it. I'm going to go back to straight line and go back to curved line. And hopefully this will go work for me. And so now I go back to there, and I go back to straight line. I go to the bottom of the hinge, so it snaps the same length. I click, I close it, I extrude it by two inches, because these are two inch hinges. Uh, 
I didn't make it, you know, I, the, the, the measurements are off, but there's the hinge with the curled, curved over piece. And then I'm going to take a cup of something to, to cut into it. Now watch this cutting into it. This should be cool. I go to my fasteners. I'm, I'm not cheating. I'm using available tools. I need some screws. Regular, everyday, not high bolts. Detailing. I'm going to go to a wood screw. 3D. Okay. I'm just going to place it so I have it. Yes. Okay. I'll look at it from above. I have it chosen. I hit. There we go. I'm going to take it. Move it over here. All right. I'm going to look at it from this direction. Move it up. Choose both items. Oops. Okay. Model, subtract from that one. It's done. I have to do a little bit, I got to do a little better job targeting it, but I just cut the hole with the countersinking into the screw. Now, granted, I left the head of the screw on with a slot, so it cut the slot into it too. It was that precise. But now I have the screw hole in, in the hinge. So don't push the screw so far in, and you'll be able to cut it with the countersinking of the screw. Did that make sense? Okay. All right. So with that, have a great day. Yes. You want us to build a watch model? Yes. Bring it in with people with paper. In paper, I want you to print it out. This is a, this is an exercise in your different views and actually printing it, and a floor plan and your walls and seeing that it works. Okay. Yeah. Mine was half inch. It's only two pieces of paper big. You know, don't go overboard. Okay.